Hello everyone and welcome to week 8 of the TBL. We are here undefeated. The New York Napoleons will go into this one, but we may not come out that way. This is going to be the riskiest team I am bringing because there's no fun if you're not going to take some chances. So this team is going to be crazy. I could miss moves on almost every single one of my Pokemon and it's going to be wild. So I don't know how it's going to be. As most of you may have seen, it was live streamed on Friday. So shout outs to David for being another streamer. If you have not seen his stream, I encourage you to go check it out. Link is in the description below. Anyway, this is being recorded before Friday because I want to make sure you guys get my honest thoughts about how it's going to go and we'll see how differently it ends up. First things first, his team is absolutely terrifying. His team has Kartana, Excadrill, Florgis, Rotom Wash, Galvantula, Chandelure, Gallade, Skuntank, Raticate, Alolan Form, Muck, and Mega Blastoise. Now, yes, he and I traded Electivire and Skuntank to each other, so now he's got the Skuntank. Or I have the Electivire. Um, and he's also picked up Florgis since the last time I faced him. So he dropped Mimikyu, or he, he traded Mimikyu to another team. So, my team now has to handle some new threats, and I've got some, some fears here. Um, his base speed, his max speed is still that 109 with Kartana. Last time he brought that crazy Iron Ball set for Trick Room, we undersped it with Marowak. We're gonna try something new here. He's not going to want to play me in Trick Room, so he's gonna put speed on things. So now I have to figure out how to outspeed them. So I don't think Trick Room's gonna work twice. So, first things first, we have number one in the league for point differential, or for, uh, you know, plus minus, is Latias, rocking 12 kills this season. Last season, the first week that she didn't get a kill. She's back again. She's got Tailwind, Defog, Size Shock, and Surf. First time I'm bringing Defog, my team's not weak to rock. He's got a Galvantula, and that thing has Sticky Webs, and I don't want him getting Sticky Webs up. So, Defog, Psy Shock with the Psyche MZ with 180 Special Attack. Oko's a non-defensive Kartana, straight up. This thing outspeeds a Kartana, it's timid nature, it's 110 base speed, Kartana's 109 base speed, so we max that out. He outspeeds Kartana, or she outspeeds Kartana, and we get the kill with Psy Shock if he doesn't put defensive investment in it. If he does put defensive investment in it, it's fine. He can't Oko me with Night Slash, we have the HP investment to be okay. Tailwind, make sure that I outspeed threats. So that's a really useful thing for me to just throw up there before this thing goes down to make sure that I'm outspeeding things. Next up, we have Gone Clubbin, the Marowak. Marowak's coming back because it's playing the mind games with him. Now, we've got Stealth Rock, Double Edge, Bone Meringue, and Knock Off. This time we are going to be Rockhead. Now, Double Edge doesn't do much for me um, as far as coverage, um, but it does do a lot more damage to Rotom Wash than Bone Meringue would. And Double Edge, the only thing Double Edge is there for is to hit the Rotom Wash a significant amount harder than knockoff. Obviously, Boomerang doesn't hit Rotom Wash at all. Now, this is a crazy EV spread, so hear me out while I tell you why we're running some of these moves, or these, these EVs. 252 HP, 204, Impish Nature guarantees that I can take a Jolly Kartana Leaf Blade. Max Attack, Jolly Kartana Leaf Blade does not Oko this Marowak. Four attack is enough to Oko anything that it was going to Oko and still two at KO anything it was going to two at KO. The 44 speed gets it up to base or to number 71. 71 is slightly significant um, as it allows it to outspeed Muck. Useful um, if Muck is not invested in speed. And it hits 142 under Tailwind. That outspeeds a Adamant Excadrill. It outspeeds Florgis. It outspeeds um, a Modest Rotom Wash. It outspeeds uh, a modest Chandelure or Galvantula. Um, so we have a chance to outspeed all these things if he's not running them like max speed natures. So that's why we're making sure we have that much speed. The rest was kind of dumped into special effects. Four left over. Um, next up, we have Please Focus. Gardevoir, please. You've been so good this season. Focus Blast, Psy Shock, Energy Ball, and Will O Wisp. With the Babiri Berry, again, very specific EV spread. This EV spread is going to be used so this Gardevoir, Gardevoir, Gardevoir can take a max attack adamant life orb iron head from an Excadrill with the Babiri Berry, and it can also take a jolly natured smart strike from a max attack Kartana. So Babiri Berry, really useful when he's got both Excadrill and Kartana. 
Now again, we put in just enough speed so that we outsped some of those common threats um, under Tailwind to make sure that we're guaranteed to outspeed them. And we have max special attack because in Modest because it's Gardevoir. Now Gardevoir is rocking Will-O-Wisp this week because I can take a hit from Exe Driller Cartana and if I don't trust Focus Blast, and I may not trust Focus Blast, Will-O-Wisp is a little bit more accurate um, and will allow me to hit Gallade a lot harder because I'm not running Moon Blast. Um, it'll allow me to cripple the Excadrill, cripple the Kartana, um, cripple Raticate. Again, I'm not running Moon Blast. I do have the Focus Blast, but, uh, Focus Blast. All right. Um, additionally, it can hit a Mega Blastoise just to do some chip damage to it. But I don't expect him to bring Mega Blastoise this week. I just really can't see him doing that. Next up, we have Windy. Windy the Skarmory is going to have Tailwind. Tailwind, Stealth Rock, Iron Head, Whirlwind. So this thing is going to put up the Tailwind, it's going to Whirlwind opponents away. Stealth Rock obviously useful against any team, no matter what. Breaks Focus Sash, hits the Chandelure, and Galvantula really hard. Um, forces him to use Rabbit Spin later in the game. Now, the thing about this Skarmory, it's a lead Skarmory. And it's the lead Skarmory hoping he leads Galvantula. Because what I can do is set up my Stealth Rock as he either sets up his Sticky Web, or he goes for a Thunder. And if he goes for a Thunder, we have Sturdy, we survive. We have the Salak Berry. Salak Berry makes the Gardevoir, the Gardevoir, uh, Skarmory's speed goes up by one stage if it is within under 25%. So, what did we do? We made sure that that speed outspeeds Kartana. So, after the Salak Berry, uh, this Skarmory will outspeed every single thing on his team at plus one. So, we get taken down to our Sturdy, after we click Stealth Rock, then we get a chance to click Tailwind, this thing dies, and now we have a really fast thing coming out of the field with Max turns to Tailwind. That's the idea of this Skarmory. It's not really designed to survive. You'll note that I don't have recovery on it, so it's not supposed to sit there and take a lot of hits. It's a lead Skarmory to counter his Galvantula. He's not going to expect when I lead Skarmory that the plan is to be countering his Galvantula, but that is exactly what I want. That's the lead matchup that I want. That's what I'm looking for. He sets up his Sticky Web, and I set up my Stealth Rock. Then I can click Whirlwind get his Galvantula out of there, bring in something else, and then set up Tailwind on the following turn. So, um, cause then he'll thunder me down to my Salak Berry, I Whirlwind him, then I get Tailwind up after that with the Galvantula not in. So I'm okay with either one, and we have the Defog on Latias, which doesn't get hit by the Sticky Web in order to counter that. Next up is our bulky Pokemon this week, the thing we can switch in a bunch if we have to. Just kidding. It's not running the bulk set. So this time, we are running a max physical attack Adamant Venusaur. This thing is Earthquake, Power Whip, Knockoff, and Synthesis. Now it does have the recovery, it has max HP so that it can have some bulk, um, but the plan of this thing is not to sit there and stall and be the Mega Venusaur I've been running all season. It's an offensive threat, physically offensive specifically because of Florges. It would be lovely to run a specially offensive set against Kartana, but I'm not so worried about it. And in fact, I thought about running Hidden Power Fire on this thing just for the synthesis, uh, instead of the synthesis, just because the Kartana dies to hit Power Fire, even with a minus special attack nature. But I decided that I didn't need to. Um, Earthquake still to a KO's Kartana, uh, because I'm max attack adamant, and this thing is not my answer to Kartana, even though it should be. Um, and again, Power Whip, oh, it makes me nervous. Is it going to land? I don't know, but we're going to find out uh, tomorrow when I have this battle. A little bit of special defense, just because I thought special defense was a little bit more useful than physical defense uh, for this week. And lastly, welcome to the team Rampardos. Choice Scarfed Cretaceous coming on to the field for the first time this season. It's got the Mold Breaker ability. We picked this thing up last or two weeks ago, and now it is going to finally get its chance to shine. Rock Slide, Earthquake, Fire Punch, Iron Head, Choice Scarfed, 240, 244. Jolly Nature in speed allows it to guaranteed outspeed Kartana, as long as it's not Scarf, every single time, as long as I don't have Sticky Webs on my side of the field. This is the reason that Sticky Webs cannot be on my side of the field. I just can't handle them, so I need the Defog on Latias in order to get rid of them. Or the Tailwind will allow me to outspeed things for a few turns to kind of offset the problem, but that's not a permanent solution, it's a temporary solution. But it can work for a couple of turns. Mold Breaker Earthquake is the most spammable move ever. He has nothing immune to Mold Breaker Earthquake. Rotom Wash is the only thing off the ground. Mold Breaker takes that away. So unless he's running something with an air balloon, I can click Earthquake on anything. 
max attack on this thing with a 165 attack stat, even though I'm not running Adamant Nature, still allows this thing to hit like an absolute truck. In fact, Mold Breaker Rampardos Earthquake versus max HP 44 defense Rotom, chance to Oko after Stealth Rock. Fire Punch Oko's Gartana, Earthquake Oko's Excadrill, Iron Head does it is a guaranteed 2 KO after leftover recovery on Floor Disc, Rock Slide Oko's Chandelure, Earthquake also Oko's Chandelure, Rock Slide Oko's Galvantula, Earthquake Oko's Gun Tank. I mean, this thing absolutely demolishes his team once I have the situation set up for it, which is Galvantula's dead, or Sticky Webs aren't up, and I can click a move and just hit something insanely hard. Now, he can predict that. Mega Blastoise is the one thing that really counters this. Venusaur does not care about Mega Blastoise in the slightest. So this thing is going to be able to come in after I've got some things taken off the field and sweep up the rest of the game. This thing is so good in this matchup. We're going to see how it works. The thing is, if I lose this week, I lose this week. I'm not so worried about it. So hopefully I don't. But if that's what happens, that's what happens. Anyway, guys, this is a long one because I had tons to go through. Fingers crossed we don't miss Rock Slide, we don't miss Bone Meringue, we don't miss Power Whip, we don't miss Focus Blast, we don't miss, Milo, miss Will O' Wisp. Fingers crossed, guys. I don't know how this battle is going to go, but you guys can also watch it live tomorrow. Technically, if you already are watching this video as a team builder, you've already seen it or you haven't. Either way, you can watch it tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys for the battle. I'm nervous.